Hello, I'm Freefall, and welcome to my beginner's guide for the Sonic Heroes Team Rose LTS speedrun. My intent is that this video will serve as an introduction to Sonic Heroes speedrunning, and will give anyone looking into running the game an easy way to try it out and see if it's for them, while still keeping the learning process relatively quick and easy. There are a few reasons why I'm covering the Team Rose speedrun in particular, and why I generally recommend it to new runners. Number one. Team Rose offers the shortest levels among the four teams, making it simple to learn and keeping the run easily under one hour total, even for newcomers. Two, Team Rose has unique movement options available to them, such as something called ground excels and hammer twirling, the latter of which will oftentimes save you from falling. Three, this particular category is one of the highest in terms of competition, with a relatively high number of players at all skill levels. And finally, Team Rose will give you a base understanding of the game that will allow you to learn the other teams in the future much more easily. The category I'm teaching you is called Team Rose LTS, or Limited Text Selection. You can think of Limited Text Selection sort of like a glitchless category. However, it only excludes glitches that cut out major parts of the game, such as bot boosting and power flying, hence limited tech. While these game-breaking techniques are pretty neat and I don't discourage you from checking them out at some point, they can be pretty intimidating or frustrating for brand new players. This tutorial will guide you through each level and boss of the game one at a time, stopping or slowing down the game footage to explain things as I see fit. Every time I finish explaining a segment of the run, I will replay the game footage without interruption and include input display, so you can see what everything is supposed to look like in real time. I've included timestamps at the bottom of the video to help you navigate these segments. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that playing on either the GameCube or Xbox versions of the game is recommended. You are allowed to submit your speedruns on Dolphin Emulator. However, make sure you thoroughly read and understand the rules on emulator use listed on speedrun.com slash sonic heroes before doing so. With that being said, good luck, and I really hope you give this speedrun a try. First, I'd like to go over three very simple but crucial techniques that you'll want to understand from the start. The first is called a ground excel. As you can see, if I hold forward with Amy from a standstill, she takes a very long time to accelerate, and her top speed isn't particularly fast. However, if we perform a belly flop with Big and press Y to switch to Amy before hitting the ground, we perform a ground excel, and you can see how much faster it is. We will be doing ground excels all over the run, so it's important to practice and understand this concept early on. Not only is a ground excel useful out of a jump, but it's also useful in spots where we'll want to land and begin running forward immediately. For example, notice here how I intentionally touch the spring with big so that I can land with a ground excel. Here's a similar example, but with a speed ramp instead. It's also sometimes useful to ground excel, but without switching to Amy. In order to do this, press A to pull up Big's umbrella before hitting the ground. The timing here is a bit trickier, but not too bad. After pulling out the umbrella, you can also press X to switch to Cream. Having a lot of speed while playing as Cream will help us cross some pretty large gaps in a few specific spots. You may already know about this next trick. If you jump as Amy and hold down the button, Amy will do a hammer twirl that suspends her in mid-air, and you can still homing attack afterward. If you need even more distance, you can do a hammer twirl, press B to tornado, and do a second hammer twirl without ever touching the ground. Not only will this be useful in the run, it's an important trick to keep in mind if you're ever in danger of falling. When grinding on a rail, you can very quickly reach top speed by holding the B button and switching between the speed and power characters. After about 3 or 4 switches, you can notice how much faster I'm going. Keep in mind that this trick stops speeding you up once you hit top speed, and at that point you should start only holding B, like so. If you notice that you start slowing down again, like in this section, you can perform the trick again to regain speed. In order to do the inputs for this, I like to hold B down with my left thumb and alternate between Y and X with my right thumb. If you find this too awkward to do, don't worry too much about learning the trick right away. You can still get through the run without it. 
The last point is less of a technique and more of a concept. When you have a lot of speed with Amy, you almost never want to press Y to switch directly to flight formation, even if it appears that way in the top right. The reason is that when a lot of speed is built up and a switch to cream occurs, Big will try to get himself into the bottom of the flight totem, resulting in a small hop that stops you dead in your tracks. Instead what you want to do is press X twice in a row, once to switch to Big, and another to switch to Cream. This way, Big is already at the bottom and no speed is lost. I will try to remind you of this throughout the tutorial. Without further ado, let's head to the first level of the run, Seagate. Remember to always start from a fresh save file and begin the run when you select Team Rose on the Story Mode screen. After the screen fades, you'll mash Start to skip the cutscene and load into Seagate. Seagate is the only tutorial level in the game, meaning that there will be text boxes that stop you, and you have to mash A to get through them. Switching between mashing and platforming is tricky, but no other level has text boxes like this, and it gets easier over time. For this starting area, you can simply hold forward and mash A until you reach this text box here, where you can perform your first ground excel. If you'd like, you can hold B to roll down the hill section slightly faster. You'll do another ground excel once you land up here, so you can buffer a character switch to big in midair. In this following section, we're going to use Big's belly flop to skip unlocking the spring. Jump above the cage and perform a belly flop. Similar to ground excels, press X before hitting the ground to buffer a switch to cream. You'll notice that you get the height from the bounce, while still being able to fly afterwards. Fly with Cream at the peak of the bounce and press A to get up to this ledge. Then, you can press B a couple times to Thundershoot. A lot of times, if we need to reach a high place, we will fly up as Cream and Thundershoot Amy and Big to shorten the length of flight formation. In this instance, just shooting Amy was enough to get me up there. Mash through these text boxes and homing attack to the spring platform. After these text boxes, you'll want to perform a rocket excel to get up this slope. Hold B in speed formation, and once Cream and Big line up behind you, release and repress B to get a double boost. If only one of them lines up, simply release B to get a single boost. Any type of rocket excel boost will be enough to get you up. Once you reach the top of the slope, you can jump and hammer twirl over this pit to skip a text box that activates in front of the power-ups below. Take the spring up, and homing attack these enemies. When approaching this next text box, you can switch to flight to get ready to fly up. Remember, since we're switching from Amy to Cream while running, we want to press X twice instead of Y. You can use the Thundershoot trick again to reach the second ledge here. Use the same belly flop into cream and thundershoot method as before on top of this cage. Switch to big and break the two blocks in front of you. When you get to the line of blocks, feel free to break these in whichever way you feel comfortable. If you want to be fast about it, try ground excelling into them and switching back to big when you land. If done correctly, you can break two at a time, like so. Also make sure Amy and Cream are not on Big's shoulders when you try to ground excel, otherwise it won't work. Either pulling out Big's umbrella or a quick character switch will fix that. As you jump over this line of robots, you might want to use Big's umbrella just to make sure Cream doesn't run into one of them. You'll have to wait for her to get up if this happens. For this final cage, you're able to walk between these two robots and press A twice to get through the text boxes. If you keep running into them, feel free to kill them first. You can also do the belly flop on this little ledge instead of the top of the cage if you want, as you'll have enough height either way. And there's one last text box we can skip at the end. Land somewhere about here as Amy, jump, and homing attack the goal ring at the peak of your jump. This will save you a little bit of text smashing at the end.
At the start of Seaside Hill, take the middle flight formation gate and fly up to this platform. As the platforms rise up in this next section, be careful not to land on them too low as they are below the kill plane for the first few seconds of their ascent. You can then land with a ground excel to quickly go around this section and make your way up to the second long platform with Amy. Here it is fastest to press X twice to switch to cream and fly your way up to the hill like so. There isn't much to say about the cart section besides make sure to hold up on the control stick the whole time. You can try and hug the turns for a little bit of time save as well. After the checkpoint, run into the spring with big. This allows us to land with a belly flop. However, since there's a flight gate in front of us, we don't want to land with a switch to Amy. Instead, press A to pull out the umbrella on your way down and run through the gate to automatically switch to cream. You'll have a lot of speed at this point, so be ready to do this jump and hold left against the cliff wall. Pressing against this wall will help you get height. Walk up to the left block with Big and perform a normal ground excel to Amy. You'll then want to run around the right side of these blocks. However, be wary of the robot's positions as they are different each time, and you may need to maneuver or jump around them. You can then jump over to this ramp and touch it with Big. The rings will carry you across the gap below. If you happen to fall during this section, just take the bottom route like normal. You'll only lose a few seconds. Taking the rent with big allows us to land with a ground excel like so. Run around the cliff and press X twice to switch to cream as we approach the wall. Fly into the spring hidden in the top of this tree and then switch to Amy. After the checkpoint, there is this long downhill section that we can roll down by holding B. Keep B held until you see your characters line up behind you, and then release for a potential rocket excel. You also want to hit this ramp on one of the sides of it to go around these rainbow rings in the air, as they will slow you down with a long animation. Take the left path on this loop for a speed choose power up, and then be ready to run through two gates in the following section. We want to run through this whole hallway as Amy, so press X as soon as you touch the flight gate, and Y as soon as you touch the power gate. Finally, ground excel to break the blocks and jump into the goal ring. Ocean Palace has four of these doors that take two hits to open, the first one being at the start here. I'll teach you a fairly quick and easy method of opening them. Press B with big for the first hit. For the second hit, we want to ground excel so we can immediately start running. However, we can't do a belly flop when Amy and Cream are on our shoulders like this. To fix this, just press X and then Y and ground excel. Run to the left and then to the right to avoid the blocks and robots. On this downhill section, we want to jump over the block ahead of us and go through the speed ring in the air. 
Although there's a flight gate ahead of us, I like to switch to cream beforehand by pressing X twice and then jump. If you want to save a little time, boost and thunder shoot as you enter the ring to fall faster. If the characters fall with their hands in the air, you know it worked. Run around the left side of the blocks and switch to big as you come up to the fan. Take the fan up and belly flop when you have enough height. Here is another situation where we want to stay as big when we land, so pull out the umbrella instead of switching to Amy. Now, we can ground excel into this block and press A to homey attack upwards into the speed ring. Break the door the same way we did the first one. On this downhill section, there are three blocks, however, only the second and third will actually fall. So, stick to the right and go left to avoid the last one. Immediately double tap X and jump over the ledge. Before you start descending, fly up and thundershoot both Amy and Big to land on the path above. Ground Excel and jump over the three robots in front of the door. I like to jump over them as Big because otherwise he can run into the enemies and take damage, forcing you to wait for him to get up to open the door. As you ground Excel through this door, there's a speed pad in front of a large gap. Ideally, you tap B as you hit the pad to hammer jump, and then jump out of the animation to the other side. If this isn't working for you, you can jump as you hit the pad, hold A to hammer twirl, and homing attack across. If you end up falling, simply fly your way back up. It's faster to land after the second fan before taking the third one up. From here, ground excel and continue. There are two strats I recommend trying here. You can time a B press as the gate switches you to big to break both of the blocks that fall in front of you in one attack, then switch to Amy and move on. Alternatively, as you run through the gate, immediately press Y to switch to Amy and jump and hammer twirl around the left side of the blocks. From here, homing attack to safety and continue up the stairs. After the checkpoint, make sure you jump into the cannon as cream. Jump and fly over to this turtle and homing attack the spring behind the robot. Make sure you're far enough forward to not homing attack the enemy by accident. Take this second cannon as Amy and make your way to the goal ring. The strat for Egg Hawk is always the same, however there are two ways to work the camera. The first method I will show is having the camera face backwards, because I believe it to be the easier one. 
However, feel free to choose for yourself which you prefer. To keep the camera backwards, simply tap R before the camera has a chance to sweep behind you. Ground Excel to the box on the left, and Ground Excel again to break it and get the invincibility power up inside and continue running. When we reach this next road section, we want to switch to big and press B to attack. We also want to make sure that we stop in the right spot. You want to stand right where the road flattens out, between this line and this line. When you get there, the camera should automatically flip around and Egghawk should be approaching you. Jump and do two aerial attacks, at which point Egghawk should start making his way backwards to the beach area. While you're still in the air, you can ground excel and get there before he does and deal some damage in flight formation. If Egghawk stops short of you here and does not go to the beach area, it either means you took too long at the start, or you weren't in the right position. If this happens, simply get back into position and wait for him to charge you again. Once Egghawk lands, he's going to start turning to the right. Simply play as big and spam B while the head turns into you. As long as you've got invincibility, you don't have to worry about taking damage. Here's the same fight, but with forward facing camera. The downside is you'll have a harder time getting the box and stopping at the right spot, but the upside is you'll be able to see Egghawk the whole time. You'll want to be holding up for this entire blue path at the start of Grand Metro. Additionally, at the line of rings, you can hold B, release, and repress for a double rocket excel. Run your way up to this first gap and switch to cream. Take the speed ring, and feel free to go for the same thundershoot optimization I showed you in Ocean Palace. Wait a few seconds for the bridge to appear, at which point you can do a double rocket excel. These bridges can be finicky and eat your speed sometimes, like you see in this clip. The other option is to simply ground excel if you want to avoid this. At the bottom of the slope, there's another speed ring that you can try to thundershoot through. Run around all of these enemies, then at the top of this slope, Jump to hit the ramp on its far edge rather than running into its near one. This will send you over the rainbow rings, avoiding another long animation. I strongly suggest grabbing this checkpoint before attempting bridge clip. The goal here is to get enough speed and jump across the gap so we can fly underneath the bridge in flight formation. Recall at the beginning of the video when I taught how to switch to cream out of a belly flop by pulling out the umbrella and switching to cream with X. If performed well, you will have plenty of speed and be in flight formation so you can jump your way across the gap. Hold the jump out until cream is about here, at the same height as the bottom part of the bridge. Then, catch yourself with a flight, thundershoot your characters as you fall underneath the bridge, and once you're against the wall, press A to clip under the bottom of the bridge. If done properly, you should never have to let go of up for the entirety of the trick. Once on the other side, there will be enemies that you might want to jump over. They can be sometimes difficult to see with the camera. Ground excel to the left ramp and get ready to jump across this gap with a hammer twirl. Wait for this door to fully open before ground excelling through. You might have to wait longer than you think. You can switch to big and use the umbrella to quickly cross this small gap. When the blue path ends, hold B to roll off the ledge. 
Simply trying to run off will cause Amy to do her ledge animation. When you destroy the turtle, you can spam B as Amy to press the switch from the outside. Just a small optimization. Hit the spring with big to land with a ground excel. As you approach this pole, Cream should be right behind you, so just quickly tap B to Rocket Excel and go up. The fastest strat when you reach these enemies is to walk up and team blast them. This will destroy the three robots in front of the door, as well as the one behind it, opening all of the cages. In some cases, especially if you took a death earlier in the stage, you won't have your Team Blast meter full by this point. You have two options in this case. The first is to simply destroy the enemies with homing attacks. The slightly faster option is to fill the rest of your meter using Team Blast glitches. In order to do this, get into flight formation and press B and X on the same frame. You will likely have to do this twice, but it should quickly fill the meter and you can Team Blast like normal. Once you're up here, do another roll off the ledge and run into the cannon. The end of the stage is three short rail sections. You can hold B and switch between speed and power to build speed on rails. Refer to the beginning of the video for how to properly do this. Otherwise, it's okay to just hold B with Amy. Either way, it's faster to jump off these first two rails and jump onto the subsequent one, rather than take the slow springs on the ends. When jumping off, I recommend keeping your control stick neutral to avoid rail switching and flying off the side of the level. Hold up after the last rail to reach the goal ring. What a huge plant! The buildings are so tall, it's making my head spin! Froggy, where are you? Hmm, this path makes me fast! My I'll do my best. Here we go! My turn! Here we go! Here we go! Level up! Here we go! Wow, there's a lot of them! Here we 
Power Plant begins with an elevator that takes about 30 seconds. In the meantime, pop two of the balloons for flight level ups, as these will allow you to defeat the enemies at the top with Thundershoot. After popping them, you can wait at this edge of the elevator. This will be where the roof's exit is, however, if you lose track of which side is which, simply wait out the elevator and find the exit. If you'd like to save a little time, at 26 seconds on the clock, you can do a belly flop and buffer a switch to Cream to fly up early, very similar to what we did in Seagate. Thundershoot the enemies and ground excel when the bridge appears. Hold up through this entire loop section. When you land, switch to big and ground excel. At this speed pad, press X to switch to big and press B as soon as you go airborne. If timed well, you should get this skewed belly flop sideways. Before your gravity switches back normal, pull out the umbrella and make your way to the blue wall. If you don't get this, just walk over to the blue wall with Big. At the top, belly flop into Cream and fly up at the peak of your bounce. Or, just land on the blue path and fly up with Cream. You can skip this slow spring by flying up with Cream. After destroying the turtle, get ready to jump into this blue wall with cream as it forms. Normally, this wall will send you into the air and you have to fall slowly. Press A as soon as you have enough height to cut the ascent short and save a few seconds. After that speed ring, we come up on another quarter pipe section in front of a speed pad. Stay in flight formation, take the speed pad, and jump right when the ground flattens out. If done right, you'll jump high into the air, where you can fly to the boxes and thundershoot your way through. If you miss the jump, just thundershoot the enemy and wait for the platform to rise like so. After the checkpoint, ground excel all the way down to the bottom route. Run up to this turtle, switch to big and press B to attack it. If you time this B press well, it should also have you touch the spring from outside the cage. Land with Amy and jump over the gap. For this final homing attack section, you should have enough speed to skip the first enemy like this. For each of these homing attacks, make sure your height is good enough to reach the next target. This is especially important for this last ring box and the goal ring. Mash start after Power Plant to skip the cutscene. For the Team Sonic fight, there is a quick kill that is always possible to get on the first time the fight is loaded. In other words, if you fail the quick kill, pause, and click restart, there is a good chance that the quick kill will not work anymore because Team Sonic will not behave differently. I'll first show you what the quick kill looks like, and then offer a few backup options if it goes wrong. As the camera shows Team Sonic, make sure you're not pressing L or R so the camera doesn't get messed up. At about this point, or 3.5 seconds on the clock, start holding down. As you gain control, keep holding down, and when Amy is about here on your screen, quickly tap and release B to break the boxes. 
Very shortly after, you'll tap and release A to jump. I like to do this jump right before Sonic reaches this red line on the ground. Be sure you're just tapping the jump button and not holding it. If done correctly, Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles will jump into the air and attempt to land behind you. After you jump, I recommend turning the camera with R to see if they all fell or not. If your jump was mistimed, one or two of them may live and you'll have to fight them normally. If this happens, you can sometimes get lucky and hit the remaining teammates off in a timely manner, but unfortunately it usually ends up taking a while. I would instead recommend one of these three backups if the quick kill goes wrong. 1. Restart the fight and go for the quick kill again. Like I said earlier, this has a low chance of working after the first load, but there's always a chance it will. 2. Quit out and re-enter Team Rose on the Story Select menu. This guarantees that when the fight restarts, the quick kill will work on the first load again, and you don't lose any in-game time while in the menu or on the loading screens. The only thing to keep in mind is if you're using RTA splits, you'll want to pause your timer when you quit out and unpause it as you load into the fight again to keep your timer accurate. If what I just said doesn't make sense to you, don't worry. It should later when I talk about how the game is timed at the end of the video. 3. Restart the fight and fight Team Sonic normally. I'm sure a lot of you already know how much of a hassle this can be, but if you're confident in doing it quickly, I'd say go for it. The best I can do is offer 3 tips on doing team fights. Thundershoot is great for knocking your opponents off if they don't have rings. If they do have rings, using your power character is more effective. And finally, throwing tornadoes at them can sometimes be very effective. This fight will almost certainly be a nuisance for you at some point, so don't feel discouraged if you lose a lot of time here. After a while, the quick kill will start to feel more consistent, so just keep at it. Amy, knock it off! There's no time to play! Casino Park is the first of two stages including pinball tables. If all goes well, you'll be able to skip a majority of them using various techniques. When you reach the glass floor in this room, break it with a belly flop and get back to safety. Switch to cream and run off the ledge. The goal here is to aim your control stick so you fall as far down the pinball table below as you can before landing on it. Notice how the camera quickly changes initially, meaning that you'll switch your control stick from up, to right, and slowly to down. Eventually you'll reach this wall of squares, where you'll want to fall into the middle track with cream like so. Hold up and fly your way into the opening at the top of the table. Before you get the hang of this, you'll probably have some attempts that look something like this, where you end up on the table below. You'll have to use the flippers to work your way up, which can be a pretty bad time, so don't beat yourself up if it takes a while. That being said, now is a good time to explain a few things about pinball mechanics in this game. When you switch characters, the character you switch to will typically snap to wherever the character you're currently playing as is. When one or more of your characters are rolling on a pinball table, the opposite becomes true. You will teleport to wherever they are. Sometimes, this is very helpful. For example, even though I'm playing as Amy way down here, I notice that Cream is way up here near the top. If I switch to her, I can go up there instantly. If you're struggling on a pinball table, it's good to keep in mind where your teammates are, because it might be worth switching to them. On the other hand, you have to be very careful after you leave a pinball table to not switch to someone who is still on it. In this example, Big gets through the table first. But, when I try to switch to Amy, I end up back here because she's still on the table. For that reason, whenever you finish a pinball table and want to switch characters, it's very important to wait a few seconds until you physically see your characters reappear next to you. I'll be sure to remind you of this in spots where it's likely to be relevant. Luckily, this only applies to two levels in the game. Anyway, after that pinball table, you'll land at this checkpoint. Take the springs up and hit the gong as big. After the auto-scroller, fall slightly to the left and land in this pipe. Hold right as you exit the pipe and it should set you right on this flipper, where you can press A and bounce up. Up here, wait for Cream to reappear and switch to her. 
There's a couple of ways to skip this next table. The first is to take this ramp in flight. Hold back on the control stick and spam A, cause you might need to catch yourself to land on this dice block. When you get your footing, jump and start a flight at about this height. Thundershoot both Amy and Big at the top of the table, and make sure they roll off of the top of the table rather than clear it. Hold up after shooting them, and when Cream becomes a ball, press Y to switch to Big. Press L to fix the camera and aim Big over to this platform. Wait for Cream to reappear once you're down here, and fly to the goal ring. The other method starts the same way. Get on the dice block and fly as close to this green exit as you can. You can then thundershoot your characters inside, land on the table, and then switch to them. From there, open the door with the two switches and break the glass. This city reminds me of Casinoopolis. Look at all those neon signs! The city can never sleep. My ho -ho. I'll do my best! When in the ball, press the A button to hit it with the flippers. Press the L button or R button to control the flippers. My turn! My head's spinning! This is making my head spin! Feels good! I'll do my best! Here we go! My turn! Bingo Highway starts with the downhill section where we want to end in the left pipe. I like to go to the right initially and then drift left to be consistent. When you land, homing attack the enemy and continue. I recommend getting rid of this enemy before breaking the glass, since he can sometimes capture one of your characters. Feel free to skip him if you're comfortable. Break the glass and switch to cream. After these springs, you'll want to prepare to jump off the left edge of this platform. Make sure to give yourself enough room to make this jump, but also have enough speed to make it across. It's not a precise jump, but just be cautious. You'll want to take this checkpoint as cream. If you accidentally grab it with a different character, you don't have to worry. Hit the gong with big, and switch back to cream right away for this table. It's very helpful for this section to have a smaller hitbox, so playing as big is not a very good idea here. Once you're in the pipe, get ready to hold diagonally upright on your control stick so you hit the yellow arrows on this table. Unfortunately, this is the one uphill pinball table in the run that is not possible to skip, and it's notorious for costing speedrunners some time. Like I said in Casino Park, don't beat yourself up if this takes a while. The ideal path looks something like this, where you hit the yellow arrows, drift left onto the flippers, and hit the ball two or three times to get up. Make your way over to this spring and be sure to jump or maneuver around the enemies. Break these boxes and wait to take the ramp until the two flying enemies are apart, as it's very easy to fly right into them otherwise. This second checkpoint we will also want to try and grab as Cream, giving us level 2 flight. Enter this tunnel as Cream. Right after you hit one of these green bouncers, press A to catch yourself. If you got both previous checkpoints with Cream, these flying enemies can be destroyed very quickly. Yeah. 
In this room, simply run into the middle of the room and Team Blast. Similar to Grand Metropolis, if you don't have Team Blast meter here, you can opt to either do Team Blast glitches or fight the enemies without Team Blast. For this last table, we actually do want to play as big. Be careful to avoid the death pits on your way down. Once you're in this pipe, hold straight left. Hopefully, you'll break out like this and you can make your way down to the bottom of this table here. Sometimes, however, you won't break out of the pipe and end up going this way. In this instance, I recommend just waiting until the pipe drops you safely, where you can fall to the bottom of the table. Once you land on this platform, wait for your teammates to reappear before finishing the level. Robot Carnival is very quick for Team Rose, and can be done the exact same way almost every single time, barring one instance of very bad RNG that changes things just slightly. Start by switching to Cream and getting the balloon above the level. When you land, use Team Blast. Once it's finished, you'll want to do a combo with Big that covers the side of the arena with the spring on it. Be standing somewhere near this spot. After that, do the same thing on the opposite side. You should notice at this point that a bunch of level ups have dropped. Chances are, you either already have level 2 with cream, or there's a yellow power up that you can pick up. With level 2 cream, you can easily thundershoot your way through the next 3 phases. There is about a 15% chance however that you won't have level 2 cream at this point. In which case, you'll simply want to use homing attack instead until you get the level up.
For the final two phases, stand in the middle of the arena and do two combos with Big. For these two rail levels, you're going to see me doing a lot of these character switches on rails that I talked about at the start of the video. Remember that these are only effective in spots where you noticeably slow down. After you take the first two boosters, switch to flight and jump a couple times to the right until you're off the rails. Use the left trigger to help with the camera as you fall to these rails. After the checkpoint, I recommend destroying the enemies after the rails so they don't shoot you. Face the camera this way, do a ground excel, and jump over to this platform. To get around these boxes as Amy, hold B as you go past them to roll. Here, you can either grind to the end of the rail and take this spring, or be a little faster and jump to the rail over. Instead of rail switching, or that is pressing A while holding to the right, I would instead recommend that you jump while not holding a direction and then drifting to the rail. As you approach this spring, switch to cream. When you bounce up, fly over to this ledge and homing attack over to the furthest rail. You can choose to go up this pole with either a rocket excel or a tornado. As you exit this loop, Switch to cream and hold forward as you leave the rail to skip these rainbow rings. At around this point, we want to switch to the yellow rail that's to our right. I like to time a rail switch right as I pass through this gate here, which tends to put you on the right one. As you leave this rail, it's up to you if you want to take the checkpoint on the platform below. Otherwise, fly off the rail as cream and drift down to the rails in front of the red tunnel. You can repeatedly press down on the C-stick to give you a better camera for this. Level up! 
After the first rail, I recommend homing attacking across the narrow beam to avoid falling. On the other side, rotate the camera slightly with L, ground excel, and jump to the vertical rail. At the top of the fan, you can land with a ground excel. Hold B with Amy as you pass under the jellyfish robot to avoid being captured. In order to enter the cylinder quickly, approach it in flight formation and quickly switch to Amy and jump. At the end of the balloon section, you can hold straight left and land on the rail. As you fly off this rail, you can switch to big and press B to do a belly flop with skewed gravity, similar to the one in Power Plant. You won't quite make it over the enemies, so pull out the umbrella and float past them before ground excelling. Another skewed belly flop can be done off of this rail if you're quick enough as well. You can run through all of the train section as Amy after breaking the boxes. Be wary of the jellyfish enemy that can sometimes be hard to see behind the capsules. It will always be in a random spot. You can quickly jump and float off of the rail early with the umbrella over to the goal ring platform. This jump can also be done with cream if you prefer. Egg Albatross is a fight that has three different phases. All three phases can be completed very fast and predictably if everything goes as planned. 
but things can quickly fall on your ability to adapt if one of the phases goes wrong. Usually, these mistakes end up being either you didn't deal enough damage to end a phase when you should expect to, or you got hit by something, and now the boss's movement patterns are going to be different from what you're used to. Before I show you what the fight looks like optimally, I want to tell you a few things to keep in mind if you ever have a more disorganized fight. 1. You never want to reach a rail section. Going too far forwards or backwards is something you want to be mindful of when fighting Albatross, because you never want to leave the initial platform that you spawn in on. 2. Albatross will always charge towards you once you're far enough away. This is useful to keep in mind if he ever gets away from you, because you can ground excel backwards and get him to approach quickly again to deal more damage. This goes hand in hand with the first tip though, as it's very easy to want and try to kite him backwards when you don't actually have the room to do so. 3. There are two rows of enemies to watch out for, one near the front middle of the platform, and one near the back middle. Especially when you're running backwards, it can be very easy to run right into them. Before attempting the fast strat, I'd recommend becoming familiar with how long the platform is and roughly where these enemies are placed. That being said, here's what the fast strat looks like. When the fight starts, wait a split second before ground excelling forward. Albatross will be approaching from the left, so run behind him, immediately switch to big and start spamming B. Ideally, you should finish the first phase here. When you regain control, ground excel backwards and get about this distance away. Press B with big to get Amy and Cream on your shoulders and wait for Albatross to run into you on the right side. You can even walk towards him slightly before spamming B again. When this combo finishes, you're going to ground excel and chase after him before he has a chance to sway back to the left. For this particular ground excel however, notice how Amy and Cream are on the ground from taking damage, so the ground excel won't go through without calling them back with the umbrella. For this reason, just double tap A when you jump before the belly flop. Run alongside Albatross until you're almost behind him like this, when you can then simply switch to big and spam B. Don't point your control stick towards him when you do these attacks, simply let Albatross drift into them. For the final phase, do another ground excel backwards. If Amy and Cream are on your shoulders when you regain control, do another double A press before your belly flop. Switch to big and press B at around this distance, jump at max height, and press B to fire dunk as he's approaching. This should only take one hit. Good stuff if you did this whole fight cleanly. It's pretty difficult to do. Ready all cannons! Open fire! This is it! Ready? Frog Forest is a stage where controlling the camera is very important. In numerous moments, I'll be reminding you to use the L or R trigger to free the camera. Simply moving the camera any amount switches the view from auto camera to free camera, which will be useful in many of the spots in this level where auto camera doesn't give us the best view for certain jumps. Right at the start, you can build speed on the vine and jump off an umbrella with big at the end of it. Simply double tap and hold A as close to the end of the vine as you can. Hold forward on this loop section as Amy. An optional time save here is to quickly tap and release the B button at around this point before the loop ends. If timed right, Amy should do this hammer animation in the air, which you can jump out of to land on the highest platform. You can either roll or jump your way down to this vine. I recommend freeing the camera with L to make this easier. As you make your way around the mushroom, free the camera with L and get ready to jump off the vine as cream and make your way to where the checkpoint is. Sometimes when you make this jump, the camera has a tendency to 180 on you suddenly like this. This shouldn't be a huge issue since you're in flight and will be able to stop yourself from falling and get back on track. However, just know that you can consistently avoid this by locking the camera. To lock the camera, hold down both L and R like so. There are a number of ways to speed up this downhill section as well as the loop section afterward, but I would recommend beginners to just hold forward through it all, as it can be very easy to die trying to do anything else.
Run around the spring here, and then run almost all the way up the wall and jump. You can then homing attack onto the mushroom and jump through the speed ring. As you bounce up from this spring, time a homing attack right when Amy clears the green wall in front of you, then hold forward to reach the checkpoint. Fly up and thundershoot into this mushroom. Bouncing on this mushroom actually refills our flight meter, so at the peak of your bounce, you could turn your camera like this, hold forward towards the platform until the edge of it leaves the screen, and fly your way up to it. If it's more comfortable, you can be safe and just take the platforms that are in front of the mushroom instead. Once you're next to the flower, face the camera this way, ground excel, and jump off the platform with Amy. Hold A the whole time so you can hammer twirl as far as you can. Press B to tornado, and start holding A again to do a second hammer twirl for more distance. Free the camera with L, and then homing attack onto the vine below. Around here, switch to cream and jump off this vine to get to the vine below, which you can then jump off of to reach the final platform. You all ready? Chocola! Froggy! This is making my head spin! Bye, here we go, bye, here we go! Bye, Under my bye. head! Here we go! Level up! There's a frog over there! Bye, bye. Here we go! After the starting vine in Lost Jungle, run past the hammer enemy and fly up as cream. Do a ground excel and jump as cream at the top of the slope. As you jump, hold L to give you a better view of the platform above and fly up to it. As we round the corner, it's smart to grab one of the rings because it's easy to run into the flying enemy as you run into the swing. After you jump off the swing, make your way up the tree and use L to help with the camera. Ground Excel once you're up here, and homing attack the spring. During these springs, I like to switch to Big so I can grab the next set of swings with him. This way, after you pop the balloon, you can land with a Ground Excel. At the peak of this slope, you can jump with Cream all the way down to the platform, skipping the loop section. Jump over the jellyfish enemy. If you'd like, you can touch the very side of this ramp and point your camera in such a way that you can simply hold forward to skip by the slow spring on the other side. Just make sure to catch yourself with a flight. You can ground excel through this uphill part if you'd like, or take it safe and just run up with Amy. Either way, I recommend carefully making your way around the first two falling fruits, as they can be pretty dangerous to run past. Just like Frog Forest, do the same ground excel jump across the gap next to the flower. This time, you'll be able to homing attack the power up on the other side once you're close enough. As you run around this jellyfish enemy, hold B to roll so that Cream and Big are right behind you to avoid him as well. If Big gets captured, be sure to destroy the enemy to save him, because we'll need him in a few seconds. Keep B held until you touch the spring, then homing attack over to the checkpoint and grab it as Big. In this room, stand right in front of the hammer robot and spam B to do the fishing rod combo. It should destroy all three enemies and open up the cage, when you can then bounce up with Big and ground excel once you're above the final straightaway.
And with that, you've made it to the easiest part of the whole game, the Team Chaotix fight. After their intro finishes, wait for Team Chaotix to start moving in front of you. As soon as you see them move, jump and spam tornadoes in place until you win. Only two or three should be necessary. There's gotta be a major misunderstanding here, but we can't back down now. Here we go! Oh, we I must not have been serious enough. At the start of Hang Castle, do a double rocket excel down the path in front of you. After the loop, press X twice to switch to cream before bouncing on the spring. This way, once you have enough height, you can press A to catch yourself and land quicker. Thundershoot the enemy and destroy it with big. At this point, there is an optional skip you can go for that clips past this door in front of us. Switch to Amy and hold B to get ready to rocket excel. In order to get Cream and Big lined up behind me, I like to do a quick circle to give them extra time. Once they're lined up and you're holding forward, you're going to release and re-tap the B button to double rocket excel towards the door. I recommend doing this right before this line on the floor, where the square pattern stops. Then, right before you hit the door, press Y to switch to Cream and continue holding up. If done correctly, your character should hit the door and momentarily clip past it like so. This will likely take you a couple of tries, but even getting it 5th or 6th try will still be enough to save you time over the alternative. If you'd rather not bother with the door clip, you'll simply break the boxes to the right and take this route. Either way, once you're past the door, do a ground excel. If cream is right behind you afterwards like this, you can also tap B for a rocket excel. As you jump down with Amy here, the camera has a tendency to rotate away, so be ready to fix it with L if it happens. After the checkpoint, run down the path and jump off to the right with Big before the first turn. From here, you can belly flop all the way down to this path below and catch yourself with the umbrella. This is another spot where the camera can suddenly switch on you, so just be prepared. Once down here, you can skip the ramp and fall to the orb, or take the ramp with Big to be safe. Once you're above this rail, you can belly flop to it. As you round this turn to the left, switch to cream and jump off the rail. Make sure you've switched to cream before jumping off, or else you won't be able to save yourself. Fall down to this stone wall, which will have the goal ring underneath it. If you notice that you're falling at a weird angle, simply fix your gravity by wiggling the control stick a little. Bye. 
As you run into Mystic Mansion, I recommend grabbing a ring or two at the start before you go up the stairs and destroy the enemy. In this room, you have to destroy the shield robot behind the door. You can very quickly ground excel at him, switch to big and attack. Feel free to take this slower if you'd like. Once he's destroyed, head to the orb. The two robots here can be destroyed with a belly flop, which can then chain into another belly flop into cream like so. A very quick strat is to jump into this ring box here for some extra height before flying up. Make your way up to the checkpoint. After destroying the robot, ground excel around all of these enemies. You'll want to squeeze by the left side of this hammer robot with Amy. His hitbox is huge, so be careful. In the next room, you can homing attack straight through this part of the wall, which is way easier than it looks. In the room below, press X twice to switch to Cream. You can actually thunder shoot a character over to where the cart is and immediately get pulled to it. I recommend doing the thunder shoot once you're past the ring box in the center of the room, as Cream has a tendency to lock onto it. In the cart section, just make sure you're holding forward and you jump over the laser. Buffer a switch to Amy after the cart section and run over to where the left box is. If you fly and thundershoot right in front of a box like this, you should immediately snap up onto the platform, where you can then touch the switch, switch to big, and ground excel through the door below. There are three ways to get through the final room. The fastest way involves a belly flop into cream like this. If you're not comfortable doing that, here are two slower methods. They both take about the same time. At the start of Robot Storm, it's fastest to fill up your Team Blast meter with four Team Blast glitches. If you recall, this is the backup strat I showed in Grand Metropolis, where you get into flight formation and press B and X on the same frame. There are different methods people have to do these, but I personally use my left thumb on B and my right thumb on X to help me press them at the same time. When the meter is full, use Team Blast on the first wave. If you'd rather not bother using Team Blast glitches, you can clear the first wave with homing attacks. If you do it this way, you'll want to make sure that Cream and Big homing attack with you. In order to ensure this, I recommend starting over on the left, getting them behind you, coming to a stop, and jumping, making sure that they jump with you. For the second wave, press B with Big and get Amy and Cream on your shoulders and stand in the middle of the arena. Start your combo as the enemies are spawning in. For the third wave, do the same thing but stand slightly in front of the cage. Once the cage opens up, press up against it and press B. 
This way, when you land, Amy and Cream will already be on your shoulders and you can immediately do your combo in the center. For the next wave, simply wait for the robot's shadow to appear on the floor and team blast. For the final hammer robot, get Amy and Cream on your shoulders and stand in the middle. Wait a few seconds and start your combo, which will destroy him as soon as he lands. The timing is pretty lenient, but you can use the end of Cream's voice line as a cue if you'd like. You'll gain control of your characters in mid-air, so you can hold forward to land further on the middle rail. At the end of the rail, hold neutral on your control stick and press and hold A to jump off. You should go through the rainbow rings, but if you miss the jump, here's a backup you can do. Jump off the second platform with cream, and ideally thunder shoot through the speed ring. After this speed ring, be careful about holding forward too much, because it can make landing on the rail harder. When you reach the spring, you can touch it from the back side to hit the side of the fan above and pull out the umbrella. Once you're in the fan, belly flop and pull out the umbrella to get enough height to get over here. Pass the robot, do a belly flop into cream on top of the cage to get up, similar to how we do it in Seagate. After the checkpoint, jump on the edge of the ramp with Big to go over the rainbow rings. This ramp coming up is notoriously easy to clip and fall through, so I recommend jumping and holding A to hammer twirl over it. On the next platform, it's faster to go around the left side of the spring by holding B to roll past it, then landing on the rail below. At this point, there is a warp strat that skips a 30 second auto scroller that you can opt to do. It can be scary for beginners, so I'll continue showing the normal route and show you what the warp looks like later if you want to do it. Jump over the spring and then use Big's umbrella to get down to this platform. You can also homing attack down, but be careful not to homing attack the bird robots as they pass by. Tornado the propeller and then grab it to start the auto scroller. There's nothing you have to do here besides make sure you don't press any buttons because it'll make you fall off. As you run along the right side of this path, you can use a rocket excel to break through the gate in your way. Press X twice to switch to cream and jump on the slope here up to the next platform. For this flight, do a belly flap into cream and thunder shoot for extra height. Fly over the cannon in front of you here, but make sure not to be in its line of fire. 
Jump into this cannon with flight and hold A to bounce up. Then you can fly your way over the gate. If you destroy the cannon on accident, you can do the same bounce strat on the robot enemy to your right. For this final ground excel, line yourself up with this line on the floor and hold straight forward. Then you can homing attack the goal ring. For the warp strat, switch to cream and jump up here. Fill out the rest of your Team Blast meter and use Team Blast. Team Blast has a special effect that gives Team Rose speed shoes for a period of time, and we'll be using this to reach the next spot. Ground Excel here to build speed, switch to cream, and jump. Hold this jump as far as you can and fall to about this spot. Then you can fly into this dark section on the wall. Once you're in here, switch to Amy and start holding B and running up left. Before you hit the wall, release and repress B to double rocket excel and double tap X right away to switch to cream. Similar to the last jump, you'll need the speed shoes while you're airborne. The goal here is to touch an invisible trigger that instantly warps us further into the level. You'll have to get a feel for where this trigger is, but it's not too hard to find. Just keep holding up left as you're falling and make small adjustments left. When you touch the warp, catch yourself with a flight and continue like before. If you do the warp strat, your camera here will be top down during this runway section, which is pretty inconvenient. One option that fixes this is holding L and R to lock the camera, which looks like this. At the start of Final Fortress, hold upright and take the ramp. On this rail, simply hold B and fly off the end of it, and hold up to reach this platform. From here, homing attack onto the next rail. Tapping L might help you with the camera here. Fly off the end of this rail with cream, and then fly up here. You can homing attack all the way down to the ground below, then break the leftmost block with big to take the spring up to the checkpoint. Homing attack down to the moving platform. Off of the next three ledges, you can roll off with B and then homing attack down like so. Ground Excel forward on the runway. At the start of the slope, you can jump and homing attack your way up to save time. 
Belly flop into Kareem on top of the cage and fly up to this rail, which you will need to thundershoot to get onto. This is another instance where moving the camera a bit might help you. Make your way to the pole on the other side and tornado. After you get launched, simply hold neutral and wait for Amy to land on the rail before continuing. Before the end of this rail, jump off of it with cream and make your way to this ledge. Fall down just enough so that you fly without bumping into the red wall. All you need to do is land on the floating platform down here, but it's much safer to land on from higher up. Before you touch this speed pad, switch to cream. After you're free from the spring, fly the rest of the way up to this platform. You'll need to destroy the E2000 robot in front of the gate to open it. A fast way to do this is to thundershoot it to stun it, press B with big, and do two aerial fire dunks. Feel free to use Team Blast if that's easier for you. The camera here is not very helpful, so watch out for the laser that goes up and down. To hit all three of these switches, use power formation. Then take the fan up. After the speed rings, press B while holding neutral to belly flop to the middle rail below. It's important here to just press B without a direction, since inputting a direction might cause you to miss it. At the end of this rail, do the exact same belly flop again by pressing B without a direction. Avoid the final spike ball by rail switching to the left or right, then fly into the goal ring. Here we are! It's quite overwhelming! I've got to pull myself together! Froggy! Here we go! Under my belt! Hmm? There's something there! Egg Emperor can be defeated very quickly using level 2 cream, so our priority is to get two flight level ups. Once the fight starts, follow him while dodging his blade beams and get the power up on the left. Once Emperor reaches the ramps, let him pass over the gap a bit before you fly into the speed ring, otherwise you'll fly right into him. When you pop the balloon in the air, you should have level 2 cream ready. Land on either the left or the right side of the track below. You'll notice that by standing on the side, Emperor will aim his blade beams at you, which clears up the opposite side. So, once he's shot his fourth beam, walk over to the other side and switch to big. At this point, Emperor will charge at you quickly. Before he hits you, press B to attack and avoid taking damage. Quickly before he has a chance to get away, switch to Cream and thundershoot both Amy and Big at him. 
Hold this flight while he's shooting blade beams to deal as much damage as possible. Usually one of them will lock onto his core, but sometimes you can get lucky and both of them will lock on, ending the fight in just one cycle. If he's still standing, land and walk over to the other side and do the same thing again until he's finished. If you've made it this far, congratulations! You can stop your timer and officially say you've completed a Team Rose speedrun. Once you've completed a run, there's a few things you have to keep in mind in order to get your final time. First thing to understand is that Sonic Heroes runs use in-game time, or IGT. This is different from the time you see on your splits. IGT is calculated by the game and only includes time spent playing the game, not waiting through cutscenes or loading screens. In order for IGT to be accurate, it's extremely important that you sit through the final cutscene and the credits after Egg Emperor. If you try and reset the game to save time, your IGT won't include your Egg Emperor time and your run will be invalid, so just be careful of that. When the credits are over, it'll send you back to the Story Select screen. Head back to the main menu, go to Options, Game Data, and see what the file timer says. Whatever time is there is your final speedrun time. If you've got a video of your run, I highly encourage you to submit it to the leaderboards on speedrun.com slash sonicheroes. I'll leave a link in the description below. Submission is very easy. Just click Team Rose, Submit Run, change the run type to limited text selection, fill out the form, and click Submit. Runs typically take about a week or less to get verified. On a similar note, I also welcome you to join the Sonic Heroes speedrunning community discord and let us know about your PB there. The community is incredible and very welcoming to newcomers, and we would love to have you be a part of it. I'll leave a link to that below as well. Lastly, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video and learn this category. Heroes is an amazing speedrun that needs a lot more love, and my mission with this video was to get more people into it. Thanks for being a part of it, and I really think you're going to have a lot of fun playing. Feel free to reach out in the comments with any questions you might have, and feel free to follow me on Twitch if you want to talk to me directly. Later everyone!